all right, I'm going to prove to you that conditional security, the belief that you can lose your salvation, is a Jesuitical Catholic heresy. It comes from the Jesuits. So you got people like Jesse Morel, Ruben Israel, uh, Gabe the Street Preacher, these people who teach that you can lose your salvation, they're teaching Roman Catholicism, they're teaching Jesuitical heresies. This is what the Jesuits believe. This is in the Catholic Council of Trent. This is this is the thing that's written by Jesuits. This is Canon Number Six, Chapter Number Fifteen. It says, in opposition also to the subtle wits of certain men who, by pleasing speeches, do good work and good words, seduce the hearts of the innocent, as it it is to be maintained that the received not hard hard to read this thing not good at reading on a computer, receive the grace of justification is lost, not only by infidelity, where, whereby even faith itself is lost, but also by any mortal sin. So you have these, these two definitions of sin, venial mortal sin. You'll see this a lot with the street preachers. They'll have these definitions of sin. You'll have, you know, willful sin and, and sin you do, just knowing sin, stuff you do out of ignorance, you know, just like the Catholics. There's a lot of similarities between the street preachers and the Catholics. Uh, wherever Though faith be not lost, thus defending the doctrine of divine law, which excludes from the kingdom of God. Now, I'm going to stop right there. The kingdom of God is not heaven, but they're, they're saying they're acting like it's heaven. The kingdom of God is spiritual fellowship with God. I'm going to get into more of that later on. But according to Romans 14, 17, the kingdom of God is, is spiritual fellowship with God. Uh, because 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11 is what they're quoting here. And this is a verse people will twist to try to prove that you can lose your salvation. And I'm, I'm going to go through some verses after I read this. Uh, showing scriptures that able twist and going through scriptures that prove eternal security. Uh, well, I'll keep reading. Which excludes from the kingdom of God not only the unbelieving but the faithful. So it's talking about, you know, obviously Catholics are not saved, but talking about who they say are saved, uh, basically losing their salvation, uh, being excluded from what, they, what, what they're saying is heaven. Uh, who also are fornicators, adulterers, effeminate lives of mankind, thieves, covetous, drunkards, railers, extortioners, and all those who commit deadly sins. From which, uh, with the help of divine grace, they can refrain, and on account which, of which, they are separated from the grace of Christ. Hmm. Separated. Basically, you lose your salvation. Exactly what a lot of these street preacher heretics like Jesse Morrell, Ruben Israel, Gabe the street preacher, all these other guys, they believe. They are teaching Jesuitical heresies. They are teaching what the Jesuits believe. Now, let's go through some doctrines on, you know, versus they'll twist to try to prove conditional security. And verses that prove eternal security. Let's get right into it. Let's go to the Bible and look at the verses. So the first verse I'm going to show you, this is a verse they will twist to prove conditional security, is Galatians 5.4. It says, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. They're going to say, see, you've fallen from grace. You've lost your salvation. Um, read the context, okay? What's Paul talking about? He's saying, if you're justified by the law, saying, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you're fallen from grace. What's he saying? Look at the first part of the passage. Christ has become of none effect unto you. There are people in that passage who are thinking or trying to go back under the law. And Paul was saying, okay, if you think you're going back under the law, then Christ has become of none effect unto you. And you, and then you fall, and then if that's the case, then you've fallen from grace. That's what he's talking about there. He's not saying you've fallen from grace as in you've lost your salvation. He's saying that if you're going back under, under the law, Christ has no effect, and you've fallen from grace, if that's the case. Yeah, it rhymes. But that's what he's talking about there. So ironically, Paul's actually rebuking what the conditional security people are trying to say, basically. He's saying if you're going back under the law, then you've fallen from grace, because Christ has become of no effect unto you. Now, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11, to that's the one they quoted. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11, to read it from the King James, not their perverted Jesuit Vatican versions. Uh, know you, know you that, that, sorry, know you, not, I want to get a physical, I've always said I want to get a physical copy of the King James Bible because I'm not the best at reading on a computer. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Now, what is the kingdom of God? Spiritual fellowship with God. I'm going to show that. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind. I'm talking about sodomites there. Uh, uh, verse 10, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So, so they'll take that and say, see, look, if you do these things, you won't inherit the kingdom of God. Now, again, what is the kingdom of God? Is it heaven? No, it's not. Uh, because they'll twist this to prove eternal, uh, not eternal, conditional security. Romans 14, 17. This is what the kingdom of God is. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. It is spiritual fellowship with God. 
So when it talks about you won't inherit the kingdom of God, it's saying if you do these things, you get out of fellowship with God. It's not saying you've you've lost your salvation. Now, on to the verses that prove eternal security. Because those are the two ones that will often run to the twist. But here's a good one. Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. So if you're sealed until the day of redemption, which is the rapture, um, what, you become unsealed or something like that? Ridiculous. You, a sealed believer cannot lose their salvation. Another good one, of course, if you're saved, you know, you know of this verse. Ephesians 1.13 In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You're sealed. You're secure. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 to 9. Or, no, or 7 to 8, sorry. Uh, uh, so, yeah, 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 it was verse 7, sorry. I, I, I thought I was looking at verse 8. So that you become, or so that you, be, you come behind, again, not good at reading, so that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 8, who shall confirm you unto the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're confirmed unto the end. He'll confirm us unto the end. Uh, 2 Timothy 4, 8. I think it's 18, actually. 2 Timothy 4, 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Preserved. He'll preserve you. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I mean, there's so many verses I can go through. These are just some of the ones I'm going through. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. Now he which establish us, establisheth us is with you in Christ, hath anointed us, is God. And in verse 22, who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. We're sealed. Again, you see this thing of us being sealed. Um, there's, I'm trying to think of some more verses to go to. Oh, yeah, there's some good stuff in the Gospel of John. And the thing about dispensationalism is I believe the Gospel of John is transitional from is transitioning from law to the Gospel of John and the Book of Acts are both transitional. The Gospel of John is transitioning from law to grace. You're basically because a lot of what John says mirrors what Paul wrote. Uh, or a lot of what's written in the Gospel of John, I'll say it that way, a lot of what's written in the Gospel of John is mirroring what Paul wrote. So I believe the, the Gospel of John is transitioning from under the law to being under grace and, and under, you know, basically the church age and the book of Acts. Because you'll see a lot of the book of Acts are speaking to Jews. I believe that the book of Acts, if you read the book of Acts, you know, uh, Acts chapter 2 primarily, it's transitioning from the gospel being presented to the Jews to the gospel being presented to both Jews and Gentiles. Because you'll see that in the book of Acts. The early part of the book of Acts, they're going to the Jews, and then the later part, they're they're kind of transitioning from going to both Jews and Gentiles. So both Acts and John are transitional. Uh, John chapter 6, verse 35, says, Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life, he that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. Uh, you got verse thirty-six. And I said unto you that ye have seen, ye have also seen, have seen me, and believe not. Verse thirty-seven. Here's a good one. All that the Father giveth to me shall come, shall come to me. Sorry. And he, and, sorry, and to him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. And uh, verse thirty-eight. And I, and sorry, for I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Look at verse thirty-nine. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all which that all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but shall raise it up at the last day. Look at that. All that all that the Father gives him, he won't lose it. He'll lose nothing. Very, very you know, that simple. He won't lose us. John chapter ten, here's another good one to throw at these guys. Oops. John chapter ten verse twenty eight to twenty nine. And I and I give unto them eternal life. Jesus gives us life. We don't we don't earn our salvation by our continuing in holiness and that kind of stuff, like what the Jesuits believe. Jesus says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 29, My Father which give them, gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. You know, and it goes down there, I and my Father are one. A good refutation of the Jesuitical pagan trinity. I and my Father are one. Look at that. Never perish. There's John chapter 5. Verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. When we believe in Jesus, we, we, he says we shall not come into condemnation. Uh, I think there's another good one is John chapter 17, verse 11 to 12. 
This is Jesus basically praying to God the Father. And I now, sorry, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through by thine own name those that whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Hmm. Jesus and the Father are one. Good verse, proving that. Verse 12, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in my name. Those that thou givest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition. And I'll say, see, look, the son of perdition is lost. Um, yeah, because he wasn't saved. Uh, but the scripture might be fulfilled. We're kept, in G we're kept by Jesus. He keeps us in his name. He keeps us in his name. Sorry. So yeah, those are some verses proving that you cannot lose your salvation. Don't believe this this Catholic Jesuit lie of, of conditional security. It's Roman Catholic, completely Jesuit and Roman Catholic. You saw right there in the Council of Trent. They're saying that if you do these things, you won't enter heaven. So don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye.